Okay, let's talk about these questions. Question one, what is the use of the oversaturated white light? Uh, this was quite a popular question today. Uh, and the different groups basically agreed. They all gave the same answer, which is that the white light is used in two main situations. One, when Frank sees the ghosts of people he was not able to save. So it's a sense of unreality. It's very subjective from his own point of view. The second situation is when Frank sees somebody that maybe he can still say. Throughout the movie, he's very in despair at the fact that there are so many people he cannot save. So when he sees somebody that maybe will live, he also sees that white light. Uh, and so um, these groups concluded that the white light represents the boundary between life and death and a chance that Frank could maybe prevent somebody from going into the next life or a reminder to him that this is why he's doing this job. And it's supposed to be unrealistic when compared to the nighttime of the city. Question two. One group chose this question, but, oh, no, 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 no group chose this question. Yeah, so um, if we think about the medics, it's a crazy job. And so the different medics have different ways of coping with the stress of the job. Um, Marcus uh, turns to religion. Wallace uses his anger and excitement to power through his job. And Frank, the protagonist, um, holds on to the hope of saving somebody, even though it's not very frequent. But what about Larry? He seems kind of normal, right? He doesn't seem too crazy. The, the craziest thing he does is want to eat beef noodles. That's not very crazy. Um, so it does seem like he has his own way of dealing with the job, and his way of dealing with the job is to try to get out of the job. He says he wants to take the exam to become uh, a captain so that he doesn't have to drive around. He can order other people around. Um, so it seems like he's playing a waiting game. He's waiting to leave the job. Um, and so he has not yet had to accept the fact that this is his job, and therefore he does not have a crazy way to cope with the job. Um, and we can also carry this question a little bit further. It seems like because Larry is Frank's first partner, maybe his this character is more normal so that we can really feel how crazy Frank is by contrast. Uh, and then once we realize that you could go crazy from this job, then we meet the other crazy people. Number three, what is Mary's role in the film? Uh, a couple of groups took this question and they all they both agreed that uh, it is not a romantic role. At first, Frank wants some kind of romance, uh, but Mary is not willing. She's not in the right mindset. Her father is still stuck in the hospital. And so in the end, their relationship becomes kind of like uh, Mary is giving him uh, another side of life. And also like uh, his, her house is the only place where Frank can really sleep well. So she's more like a supporter. One group called her a source of salvation. Joshu. I don't know if I would go that far. But it is something very different from what Frank has to do every night. Uh, every night, Frank takes care of everyone else. But when he meets with Mary, Mary ends up uh, taking care of him. Uh, and so the further question is, does it have to be a woman? Could it be a man? Uh, one group said could be. Another group said maybe not. And the reason maybe not is because their relationship starts from what Frank hopes will be a romance. So if it were a man, it maybe the relationship would start as something different. And maybe that different relationship 
would not lead to rest and uh, re-energizing. Uh, and uh, the groups who chose this question also talked about how it's a distraction from Frank's uh, job, and it's also a change of pace for the audience. You know, when Frank is working, everything is very fast paced and exciting, and the scenes with Mary sort of let us rest a little bit. Question four, nobody chose this question. It's a complicated question. Usually when doctors swear to do no harm, they're thinking about physical harm. But as we can see in this film, physical harm is only the first kind of harm. At the beginning, we see in the emergency room a woman doctor uh, who's facing like drunk people, drug addicts, and she says, why should we help you? If you're just going to go back out and get high again, why should we help you? Um, and then we have the case of Mr. Burke, Mary's father. Frank seems to hear him think that he doesn't want to live. If that's true, when the doctors are keeping him alive, is that hurting him or is that helping him? Um, so there are different ways to understand this rule of do no harm. And things can get very complicated uh, in real world situations. So when we inevitably have to deal with doctors, whether for our own health or our family's health, that's something very important to remember. Doctors usually focus on physical health, but physical health can sometimes have a mental cost. And we should remember whether that cost is worth paying. And number five, are there moments of hope in the film? Uh, a couple of groups chose this question. Uh, they all said, like, for the audience, when we're watching the movie, not a lot of hope. But for the characters in the movie, every character wants something, whether to live or uh, to escape the hospital or something. And Frank is the source of these characters' hopes. When they see Frank coming, they know they have a chance. Uh, and that the reason why we as the audience don't feel this hope is because we see the cost that this has on Frank. He helps everybody else, but who helps him? Mary, and that's about it. So when we see this Frank's story, it doesn't feel very hopeful. Uh, but there is one shot I want to mention when the drug dealer is stuck on the fence and like when they're cutting the fence and he looks out at the New York skyscrapers and the sparks and he says, it's a beautiful city. And the music also tells us it's a beautiful scene. But is that hope or is that the crazy thinkings of somebody who's about to die? And if it's the latter, does that mean that the only hope is death? Something to think about. Okay, um, so next week we're going to watch a long film and then we will discuss that film the following week and then the week after that is final project. See you next week.